Bizarre, dude. Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Carly and I cover all sorts of true crime cases from cases that we've heard some about, think like cases that we don't know anything about, cases that I think just need more coverage, and honestly, some cases that are just freaking wild that you don't even think are real. So that being said, let's jump right into today's case. Imani Moss was born on April 23rd, 2003. Not long after she was born, her mom surrendered her um, parental rights as she was addicted to drugs and knew that she couldn't take care of her daughter. So Imani went to live with her dad, Amon. Amani had five siblings who were also all surrendered. Um, they are half siblings from her mom. Amon had been charged with and was convicted of battery and second degree child cruelty in 2004 after he beat Imani's biological mother right in front of her. Amon then met Tiffany Moss, a preschool teacher at the Freedom Christian Church, and the two got married in 2009 and had two kids together, a son and a daughter. In March 2010, Tiffany increasingly began to abuse Imani, which caused her to lose her job. When Imani was six, she told the school nurse that she didn't want to go home with a bad report card because she was afraid that her parents would hurt her. She also told the nurse that her stepmother spanked her with a curtain rod. The nurse found multiple bruises on Imani. She was then taken to the police headquarters and Tiffany was arrested and charged with first degree child cruelty. She admitted to hitting Imani three times just because she didn't do her homework. She pled guilty and was sentenced to five years probation. Imani was then put under her grandma Robin's custody. She only stayed with her for six months and the school reported that Imani's performance had vastly improved. However, Amon fought for custody and in the fall of 2010, Imani was put back under his custody. Robin tried to fight this, but unfortunately she was unsuccessful. Amani tried to run away twice in 2012. One of the times, she ran to the apartment office and told them that her stepmom tied her up with a belt to a chair and put her in a cold shower. When the cops responded, Tiffany told them that Amani was lying. There wasn't any evidence, so the case was dropped. In the second incident, Amani was found sleeping in the bushes of a nearby apartment complex by a police officer. When asked, she said that she ran away because her stepmom was mean to her. The officer filed a runaway and curfew violation charges against Amani to try to make sure that she would see a juvenile court judge. And between 2011 and 2013, the family moved around a lot and sometimes was living with family. Amon worked some pretty long hours and didn't get to see Amani often. Later, he reported that she would eat a lot when he did get to see her on the weekends when he took care of the kids. Now, the juvenile court case didn't go anywhere. Like, ultimately, because there was no evidence, they just threw it out. So, honestly, it almost was like just nothing happened. They were gonna check on Amani a few times because there was, you know, a case at one point filed, even though it got thrown out. They were gonna check on her, but they didn't have, um, like the cops, they didn't have a current address and they couldn't figure out where she was living since the family was moving around. So they just kind of, you know, dropped it, just like the court case, which is absolute crap. Amani rarely ever saw her extended family, so they never knew what was going on with her. After the 2012-2013 school year, Aman and Tiffany announced that they were going to pull their daughter from public school and just homeschool her. Later on in the summer of 2013, Amani and the family moved to an apartment in Lawrenceville, Georgia. In order to make a living, Aman was working two jobs, which in turn made him pretty absent from Amani's life. This left Tiffany to take care of the kids. It was at some point during this time that she started to starve Amani and confine her just to her room. Neighbors of the family didn't even realize that there was an older sister in the family. They thought there was only the two kids and that Amani didn't even exist because they never saw her. Before long, Amani became too weak to leave her bed. So she ended up just going to the bathroom right there in her bed. So her living conditions were absolutely horrendous and no one ever did anything. Amon visited her visited her and tried to take to get her to eat but he wasn't successful. I don't know why he didn't think like wow my daughter's losing a lot of weight or wow my daughter is literally sitting in her own feces. This isn't right. I need to do something. I don't know why he didn't do anything about her situation. On October 28th, 
2013, Amani passed away weighing only 32 pounds, which is how much a three-year-old weighs. And remember, she is six. Tiffany called Amon at work to let him know that his daughter was dead. He said that when he got back home, the kids were playing and Tiffany was watching TV like nothing happened. Amani was laying on a blanket on her bedroom floor. He told Tiffany that they should call the cops, but Tiffany said that if they did, then she'd lose her kids. And who wants that? Tiffany's a great parent, right? She deserves to have her children. So instead, they wrapped her in blankets and moved her into the computer room. Eventually, they decided that they needed to cover up her death. Too much time had passed. It would be really suspicious if now they turned it in to the cops and had them report it. On Halloween, the couple decided to put Amani's body in a trash can and burn it. However, since a few days had already passed, Amani's body was already stiff and they couldn't get her in the trash can, so they duct taped her body down to sort of um, compress it, and then they covered her in a comforter and put her in a trash bag. But remember, she was only 32 pounds, so she didn't weigh very much, so this was pretty easy for them to do, which is disgusting. On November 1st, Aman and Tiffany drove Amani's body, along with the rest of the kids, hanging out in the car, to a secluded location to burn Amani's body. After five minutes, they extinguished the fire and took the trash can with Amani's body back to the apartment. The next day, on November 2nd, Amon went to work with the trash can still in his car. He confided in a friend what he did and that friend told him that he had to go to the cops and tell them what happened. So at 4 a.m. after he was done working his second job, Amon called the police saying that he was suicidal. Tiffany heard him make the call and dumped the trash can in a grassy area at the apartment and took off with the car and her children. After she dropped the kids off at her mom's house, she turned herself in as well, since she was gonna get caught anyways. In 2015, Amon pled guilty to felony murder and concealing a death. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, which I think is very fitting. Tiffany denied the guilty plea and the case went to trial. On April 29th, she was convicted of one count of malice murder, two counts of felony murder, two counts of cruelty to children, and one count of concealing a death. The couple remained married, but they lost the custody of their two other children who then went to live with foster parents and later were adopted by the foster parents. But before they were adopted, um, Tiffany and Iman's mothers tried to file for custody of the kids that didn't work. There were some older brothers of the kids. I'm not quite sure which parent they belonged to, but they tried to get custody and they were also unsuccessful. Either way, honestly, I really think that the kids are better off being with their foster parents probably than with these two monsters or having anything to do with anyone from that family because this is such a heinous crime for people to commit against their own kid. Whether or not your step parent or an adoptive parent or whatever, that kid is now your responsibility. You have now taken the care of them. Whether or not you like it, that is part of the agreement. I think this case is absolutely disgusting. I heard about it on TikTok and I think that it just needs to be talked about a little bit more because it's disgusting that a six-year-old child was m not really murdered, but I would say tortured. She was starved and that's torture. So I think that's disgusting and they deserve their sentences, I think. But I'm very curious to see what you guys think, so comment down below. Do you think the um, sentencing was justified? Do you think it was not? How do you feel about this? This is it for me today, so thank you guys for watching, and I will be back tomorrow with another true crime career video. Bye, guys.